Welcome back, everybody. I'm Brian Cooley, editor at large at Roadshow, and we're continuing with industry insights today. We've gone through the majority of the press conferences here at the Detroit Auto Show yesterday, the North American International Auto Show, which really describes it more accurately. This is one of the very biggest auto shows in the world each year. Uh, continuing now, uh, discussing in a topic area that is one of the biggest uh, talking points coming out of this show. Not a new one, but one that is really ascending to the top of the headlines across all automakers, and that is electrification of their powertrains. Uh, who better to describe that than the folks at BMW? Joining me now is Stefan Juracek, who's the head of electric powertrain development at BMW. Stefan, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Let me ask you first off, big picture, what will electric mean in a BMW uh, language or expression because everyone's going to have plug-in hybrids pure electrics they do or they are or they will soon you obviously have a very big investment in that driving experience how can you make electric different and bmw ish on your vehicles now uh, as we start some years ago with the i uh, with the i models like i3 i8 we yeah. make a dedicated development uh, for electrification that means uh, we interpret uh, the electric driving in a bmw way so the acceleration of an IS3 and also the, the combination of uh, a combustion engine, electric, en uh, electric uh, motor on the I8 is really extraordinary. That means for us uh, electrification is uh, what we, uh, dynamic is one of the major issues um, for BMW. Now we were talking uh, before we started here a little bit about where and if this will make its way into the M cars. The M cars are very, very important for your brand, very popular in the United States, and yet we don't associate them with electrification in our minds right now. Is there a marriage of M and electrification anytime soon, or is it good in more traditional manners? Uh, what we what we are doing right now, we are um, we are looking uh, very far into the future, and uh, at the end of the day, we have to be in a position that uh, for a wide range of the whole product portfolio, maybe starting with a mini, ending up with an X5, to be mm -hmm. able to be in a very short time the, that we can do out of these cars electrified cars, even it's in if it's in pure EV or even it's a PHEV. Tell me about electrification versus turbocharging. Both seem to be able to get you some really exciting, instant, right now performance when you need it. Turbos have their known challenges to work with. Is electrification going to solve anything for turbos, or am I just mixing two things that don't cross? Uh, there's a, they, are, they are fitting ex uh, very good together because... Uh, both at once. Both, both at once, because if you are going right with what we presented right now, is a i5 is a um, five series i performance. It's a hybrid. It's a PHEV, yeah. and in these type of cars, that's the 530e i performance. That's that's right. Okay, and uh, there is a combination of electric motor and there's a combination of turbo uh, of a turbo uh, uh, engine, mm -hmm. and uh, you are recognizing during the if you overtake uh, during uh, on a on a countryside, you are you are really mm -hmm. uh, recognized as an improvement of, once more, the improvement of dynamics. So it's really a new driving experience at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, fascinating for people um, who, who has the possibility to, 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 uh, uh, to drive this car, and they're coming up and say, okay, it's a complete different driving behavior. If you look at the uh, electrification challenges that you have, what are the things you can share with us that are the biggest hurdles? Is it battery? Is it motor? Is it size and weight? Is it complexity? What do you think you spend the most on if you were to make a, a pie chart of the time you spend working on obstacles in your department? Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, or right now, it's um, to, to, to go into mass production and to do a, um, a modular kit out of it, that, uh, let's say that you have a, a scalable a scalable uh, motor design, uh, what you can put mm -hmm. in the front axle, on the rear axle, in different uh, models, uh, like a front-driven car or a rear-driven car. That's one of the biggest issue to prepare the next architectures um, that uh, electric uh, uh, motors are fitting into the, into the existing architectures. Uh, the, battery right. it's, the battery itself is uh, uh, anyway uh, an issue. Uh, because um, uh, in terms of designing, we have to keep care on the, let's say, on the lifetime. We have to keep care on the safety. Right, right. On the safety. So I would say both uh, activities are in the on the on the same on the same level uh, on 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 the engineering side. What we have to do right now. 
a lot of uh, a lot of co consumers will look at BMW and they'll see the main line that we've always known. Then there's the I cars, the three and the eight, and they see that as a, you know, a, a, an, I guess an adjacent series of vehicles. Yeah. They know that they are different from the main uh, number cars. Uh, what's coming next to I that will tell us about the future of BMW? So uh, we we take the I not only as an electrification issue, we take the I as an innovative. Uh, it's, it's an innovative right. brand, and uh, we announced already for the year 2021, the so iNext, and the iNext is the next big thing uh, at BMW, I would say. Uh, it's, a, it's an electric car, and uh, we, we try to establish in this car autonomous driving, uh, and that's, uh, that's the reason why we are looking forward at the year 2021 for the iNext. All right, that'll be our next chapter of the iLine. For the iLine. Now, yeah. in your department, uh, working on uh, electric, uh, uh, electric engineering, is, is it all powertrain you work on? Do you have to get involved in the autonomous side as well? Is that where do you draw the lines within your teams? Yeah, the, the, the impact on our side is uh, that in terms of safety and, uh, and, and all these engineering aspects in, in, in safety development issues, we have to take, take, take care in, uh, in, the, in the function and software development that we are um, compliant with the regulations what we have on in terms mm -hmm. of AC development and all the stuff. That's our task, what we have to fulfill to bring our products into this autonomous driving uh, environment at the end of the day. The, um, the role of electricity going forward is one that's um, often driven by government regulation or incentive. They want to see certain goals. And that would seem to me to um, to inform or direct some of what you put into vehicles. Is there, is there a case to be made that the government regulators in most of our major regions are determining what electric cars are like today? Would you have done something different with electric cars if you didn't have regulatory goals, didn't have compliance goals that some countries have? If you had a clean sheet, do whatever you want, just look at the consumer, would there be a difference in electric electrification today? I think we as BMW, we are on the right track because um, uh, the driving behavior of the, of the different models, what we have, uh, 3 Series, 5 Series, 7 Series on the hybrid, the hybrids, mm -hmm. they're, they're very, very, let's say, convenient in, in driving for the customer. If you, if you uh, typical driving, uh, uh, driving, uh, uh, um, uh, driving cycle, Mm -hmm. Starting in the morning, you have a fully, fully charged battery, you are completely quiet, you are running electrical to your, um, out of your suburban, uh, take a little bit uh, country road, going yeah. to the highway, then you have a smoothless uh, switch to the combustion engine, mm -hmm. uh, takes an additional 15 kilometers only in combination combustion and, and motor, electric motor, and then maybe going downtown, lower the speed, going back to electri electri pure electric driving, and it's uh, much more convenient in terms of noise. It's very, no it's a noiseless uh, driving. And you would have wanted to deliver these attributes regardless of government incentive or regulation. These that's are just, uh, that's they're uh, good on their own. That's good on their own. It's, uh, it's really an, an, an improvement in driving behavior for yeah. the customer. Tell me a little bit about um, wireless or cordless charging for vehicles. Where are we? And what kind of expectations do you have? Because it seems extremely convenient. A lot of us, at least in the U.S., don't park our cars in the garage. We park them in front of the garage. And we're dealing with a cord that may be laying in the rain, getting dirty and wet. It's not yeah. a very pleasant part of charging a plug-in. Where are we with the contactless charging? Uh, there's a lot of activities right now worldwide. And uh, where we are waiting on, on a standardization, there is a standardization process, right? On it's ongoing. We mm -hmm. are looking forward in the next few weeks or months that we finalize the standardization. Okay, so it could be very interesting the first part of this year. Yeah, okay. and um, if this happens, I think uh, the, the next step will be really to get really fast in the development phase so that we can offer the inductive charging on a, on a wide band or a wide for a wide range of, of application, starting on the pure AV application and also from, yeah. the, from the PHEV. Can we but, but right now it's a little bit difficult because there are uh, different solutions available and they are not compatible. And that's the reason why we try to find a, a, a standard okay. uh, that you have an interchangeable going from one, one, uh, going from one plate, crown plate, to the other right. one. Uh, that's very that doesn't scale. You need yeah. to have a universal drive-over yeah. inductive charger for the for the for the for the global market. Really, yeah, that's you right. don't even want national yeah. standards. Global. Yeah. yeah okay. You need it global. Do you think it can have approaching ever approach the efficiency of a plug-in, or is that just a physical impossibility in terms of transfer of power? Can you repeat? The uh, trans is it ever possible for inductive charging to be as efficient 
as a w as a wired solution? Yeah, no, I, I think we we we, have, we will have some maybe a maximum five percent. It depends on the positioning. It depends on the positioning of the vehicle on the ground braid. So we have uh, anyway. So we have five percent as efficient or five percent less efficient? Less efficient. Less efficient oh, okay. than conductive. But I think that might be the range. And um, uh, it depends anyway, it depends how you locate the car ab yeah. uh, uh, above the ground plate. And there is anyways, there might be a jitter, let's say inefficiency. Yeah. And, and that air uh, gap can air vary. Air, air, air gap and yeah. so on. And um, I think the, 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 most I um, the most important issue is right now do the, spa do the standard standardization. Interesting. And, and okay. then everyone can go ahead. All right. That's exciting to know that the next few months you think yep. might bring some standards yep. to then unlock yep. development. Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, you've been a BMW 30 years, you were telling me. Yep. Obviously a dyed-in-the-wool BMW guy. What are you driving personally these days? Uh, these days I'm, I'm driving a 7 Series Hybrid. Ah, very nice. And um, I'm, I'm waiting for my 5 Series. So in four weeks I will get the 5 Series Hybrid. Very and good. And uh, I'm looking forward and I'm very happy. <laughs> Get to uh, drive. Uh, get to drive your own work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> very good, Stefan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stefan Juracek, who's the head of uh, electrical uh, development there at BMW, and uh, this is an enormously important area for all car makers. It's no longer a green-only story. It's a performance story, an efficiency story. It's also an environmental and uh, low emission story, and it's just becoming woven into and breathed into so many powertrains from so many car makers today. Uh, We've crossed the tipping point for sure. Going to take a break right now, catch our breath, and be back live from here in about 60 minutes, a less than an hour or so. In between, we've got a lot of videos we're going to round up now from the Roadshow team that have been shot this morning and yesterday. You are right in the thick of things. This show's not even open to the public until this weekend, so you're getting an early taste. Continued coverage of the Detroit Auto Show from Roadshow here in Detroit. <laughs>